December 15, 1986 was supposed to be the triumphant return of the world-famous Carnegie Hall. For 30 weeks, the concert venue had undergone a $50 million renovation. I'm a member cellist of the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra, and I'm the principal cellist of the American Ballet Theater Orchestra. I play regularly at Carnegie. It just looked fantastic with the gold trim and the beautiful cream-colored plaster and the, the new seats. You know, that it really was reborn. The audience filled the seats and the musicians took the stage. But when the orchestra began to play, it was clear something wasn't right. The rich, warm acoustic quality for which Carnegie Hall was famous had been sharply distorted. It was apparent from opening night. We all felt that there was something different. A certain harshness, a certain hollowness to the sound, this brittle quality. And it was really, it was a scandal. In the late 19th century, Andrew Carnegie, titan of the American steel industry, funded the construction of Carnegie Hall. The state-of-the-art music venue opened its doors on May 5, 1891, to much fanfare. Carnegie Hall represents the pinnacle of classical music in America. It was a very simple geometric horseshoe shape, developed in Europe and, and had a track record of creating a great sound. For almost 100 years, it stood as a bastion of acoustic excellence. But by 1986, the ceiling was leaking and the floorboards were in dire need of renovations. It had a, a certain worn-in look, you know, and you'd look up and you would see patches of paint that needed, uh, needed a fresh touch. In May 1986, Carnegie closed its doors for the historic renovations. The media documented the journey to restore the concert hall to its original grandeur. But not everyone was thrilled at the prospect of major renovations. There's a lot of fear that when you change anything, that it's going to affect the sound. When you're talking about Carnegie Hall and the sound that you feel is ideal, any change could be for the worse. Carnegie officials assured skeptics that the renovations would only benefit the pristine sound of the concert hall. So, about a month after it opened, um, I was invited to play as an extra cellist. The sound that I knew of Carnegie from my earliest uh, performances there was not the same. The sound was significantly different, that it was much brighter, a little bit harsher, and that the warmth of the bass sound was really absent. Though Carnegie officials initially denied that the renovations had changed the acoustic quality of the hall, soon the cacophony of critical voices was too loud to ignore, and the hall's officials were left searching for answers. In the old days, apparently there was a hole in the ceiling, which people said led to like a reverberation chamber that, that um, fed back into the hall. That had been covered over. There was this big kind of ornate curtain. The curtains were taken down. Something about the secret sauce of the old Carnegie sound that included these curtains. When they were taken away and the sound was brighter, people were saying, well, bring the curtains back. Put a hole in the ceiling. A press conference was held announcing a decision to experiment with strategically placed acoustic panels. They put some paneling on the walls that was absorbent, particularly absorbent of high frequencies. But it was basically to take the, the edge off of that side of the, of the acoustical spectrum so that we could hear each other better and, and frankly to make the sound a little bit darker, a little bit warmer for the audience. But even with the panels, the old Carnegie sound was still missing. Little did they know, the answer could be right beneath their feet. In 1995, a discovery offered a possible solution to the mystery of Carnegie Hall. They had this 10-year-old floor that's warping. And when the people came in to examine, what's the problem here? And they start to peel back the maple, and they find under the maple plywood. And they peel back the plywood and saw this layer of concrete. They realized that they had a major problem. I mean, they just must have been shocked. Music halls like Carnegie depend on clever acoustical engineering that moves the sound waves from the stage to the auditorium. A key element was the resonance of the stage floor. Resonance is the enriching of a musical tone by supplementary vibration. Before the renovations, the low frequency instruments like the cello and bass would vibrate the floor, amplifying the low frequency sound. Low frequency sound waves are often perceived as warm tones. But if additional concrete was added during renovations, this would have restricted the movement of the floor. 
the low frequencies would no longer be able to resonate, leaving the listeners experiencing brighter and harsher sounds. They dealt with it immediately as having completely owned up to the problem. They rebuilt the stage, and uh, when we came back to play later, it had that nice resonance and warmth that we had been missing. Although there was much debate amongst experts about whether the concrete was the real culprit, there was no denying that after the stage floor was reinstalled, many critics and musicians rejoiced at the return of the old Carnegie sound. The renovation of the venerated venue and the reaction to it would forever be cemented in Carnegie history.